Okay, hey folks, Schnabel's back out in the shop. It's getting awful cold here. Uh, rust bucket's back. Can you look? Can you tell the difference? Let me show you what's wrong. Yeah, that uh, spring is supposed to be attached right there. Sort of the way that one is. We got Ratty out here in the cold. Don't like that. The uh, quarter mile driveway has claimed another victim. So uh, that's what broke that shackle most likely was going up there hitting some potholes on the way because it's quarter miles you know what you got to do on a quarter mile you gotta rip the wheels off you don't need to take the wheels off to do that repair but why mess with an extra 60 or 70 pounds of weight yeah i don't wash my truck often that's what the driveway's for Not often I pull a wheel off and see good brakes. They're usually toast. Okay, I got the uh, back stand put in under the trailer hitch there. Just because this thing is so long on a two post lift, I'm working on the back, which is, well, as you can see, a good 10 feet from the post. If I start reefing on things, this is gonna get rocking pretty good. And I don't feel like dropping the truck on myself today, or any day for that matter. So I think it's a uh, 21 on these big nuts here. I coated them down with some WD because like I said, I live in the country and this gets pretty muddy back here. You know, it's definitely a 21, but man, it's rusty. Promising. Oh, we got it actually came really easy. I was expecting to have to come on to that. Get past all that dirt. You know, one of them's gonna give me grief. There's four of these I gotta take off. One of them's gonna be a pain. Oh, this is gonna be ugly. That was close. Almost knocked my chicklets out on the, uh, on the muffler pipe. Yeah, that's usually what happens right there. Loose are those bolts. Now we've got to always cut them out. And I don't think this will be any different. So there's one half of my shackle. You see that's uh, that's been rotted through for a while. It just hadn't let go yet. I had to work on this for a while. This might take a bit. Well, I've been beating on those bolts for easily 20 minutes. Heat, sledgehammers, pry bars, and uh, they haven't budged. So, uh, there comes a point when a person just got to say, let's do this the easy way. Well, I'm only going to fight with it for so long before I do something like this. Eight bolts for the box, two for the gas cap, one little plastic widget, and unplug two wires for the harness for the lights that go right into there. Take the box off. Anyway, now let's fix this thing without fighting it. So the weight of that axle is pulling that down, but now I can at least get in here and swing a hammer. I went over and checked this side too. And I can fit my finger right through it. Well, it's supposed to be solid steel. So this one's not long for the world either. These are a known issue with these Silverados. Well, this is turning into a bigger job than it was originally. The uh, bolts will not come through the bushings. Neither one. I've been beating on them with a, well, that, and that. And uh, yeah, they're, they're not budging. They bent real good though. So I'm going to push out the rear leaf spring bushing and I cut that one out because I got a new bolt and bushing and everything for the bottom. I just, the kit doesn't come with a bushing for the top. So I had to reorder that. That'll be here tomorrow. If this doesn't work, I'm just going to drill it, drill out the rubber. Come on now. You got like one inch to go. 
So that bolt is basically fused in there. Well, this ordeal is almost over. Things are rusted in. Look, it's not hard to tell I'm working on a rust bucket again. Shackles and bushings have to come out in pieces around here. So there's the bushing for the leaf spring. That thing is so rusted in, you're never going to push that out. Don't even try. So what I did was I cut the rubber out with a sawzall, ditch that, that leaves you this sleeve that's sitting in here. All right, the ends get all bent over, so you can't just push it through easily. What I do is, you see where there's a gap where the spring curls over? Line up your sawzall with that and cut that, because you don't want to accidentally cut into your spring. So you can see the cut I made. It's, it's not that thick, so sawzalls will blast through it. I actually had to do a second kind of a relief cut, because even with that, it wasn't budging. And then I just hit it with a punch until I bent it over. So when you look at the old one, that's what I had to chop it out to get at it. So you can see how thin the steel is. There's the replacement. Not hard to tell that that's a superior product to that. Anyway, I'm going to spend the next hour getting the other side apart because it's not broke, but there's a hole big enough to put my finger through it. So I finally got both sides taken apart and it was a treat and a half. Uh, so I guess I'll get this all put together tomorrow. Should go together real quick. Yeah, right. Famous last words, right? <laughs> Anyways, with any luck, it'll go together real quick. Hardest part is pushing the new ones of those in. Anyways, it'll be tomorrow just like that. Okay, folks, day two part showed up, of course, at the end of the day in the dark last night. So I threw them in the freezer. So the bushings are freezing. I'm going to clean up the inside of this uh, spring because there's a lot of rust in there and I don't want to have to fight with it. I just use a little Dremel bit on the drill. Just got to go around a couple times because the rust is in there as well, like kind of like that, right? It takes up space and you don't want to fight with that. I'm not really taking off steel. I'm, I'm sure there's a little bit coming out, but I just want to get that rust out of there. That's all. Okay, so once that's done, I'm just going to put in a little bit of oil just to make my life easier. Swish it around my fingies. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my propane torch and just heat this up a bit. It's about one degree, maybe two degrees here now. So just above freezing. My bushings are in the freezer. If I try to get them in, they're basically the same temperature. But if I heat this up, it'll expand a little bit and this whole process will go easier. Mike had a can of Coke in the freezer for I don't know how long, but <laughs> it blew up and covered everything with Coke. Okay, so there's the new bushings. They go in from the inside out. And, yeah, it's, again, I haven't heated that up, but it's, it definitely is going to be a fight to get that to go in. But just enough heat to expand it a little bit, that's all. And it's not even a necessary step. This makes life easier. So, we're going to put this on the end. And then this cap goes on here. Let's see. Now it should self-center and go right in. Just like that. I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, shiny and new. When you live where we do, anti-seize is almost a necessity for everything. If you ever want to be able to take it apart again in a couple years, I mean, you can see what happened here. I had to cut all the bolts out. All right, there's a part number of the new shackle if you're interested. This one's a Moog. There's, it's uh, about twice as thick as the factory one. God knows how thick the original were, ones were 19 years ago. Maybe it was just rusted over the years, but I don't think so. You can see the way it's shaped here. This end goes forward. Okay, so they just go on simply. Again, I am not putting the bolt in from the back because you can't clear the frame without cutting a hole or something to get that bolt in. I'm going to put the bolt in from here and the nut on the back. 
nut on. I'm not going to tighten that until I get the thing in. Something like that. That'll do. All right, now let's just tighten them up. That'll do. We now have springs again. So assembly was simple. Disassembly was nightmarish. Okay, folks, well, there you go. There's how to replace your uh, spring shackle on a Silverado. Pretty much the same. I don't think this design is, hasn't changed, but... Uh, and probably the whole Silverado run. Uh, they've all been pretty similar. Obviously pulling the box was just a convenience issue. You can do this without pulling the box, but I can't really imagine going through all the effort of cutting this lower bolt out the way I had to uh, with normal tools uh, if you don't pull the box. It would just, you make it way more work for yourself. For eight bolts, Two for the gas cap and unplugging the wires for the tail lights. A couple of hefty lads can pull that box off in no time. Uh, it just makes it so much easier and you don't need a lift. You're not crawling on the ground. I mean, you can see how much easier it is accessibility wise. So I would highly recommend pulling the box for the effort. Uh, you'll thank yourself later. Anyways, if you are going to take on the spring shackle, hopefully this gave you some ideas, some how to and uh, hey, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.